Hello, I've played a lot of old school RuneScape over the years, probably too much. And now, as an excuse to play even more RuneScape, I'm finally exploring what our beloved pixel game has turned into, RuneScape 3. Hello! So, to pick up where we left off, we got to this island, which, looking through the wiki, I found out is called Anachronia, um, and it is nothing like managing miscellanea because they have that in rs3 um but regardless of the fact that i don't get resources directly from this um when i did look it up on the wiki there is a good a lot of good passive buffs that i can get down the road with the base camp upgrades so i will most likely be doing that i've already gotten the lodestone here so i have another lodestone and i built the bank chest and at this point the only other thing i think i can do is upgrade the storehouse which just gives me a more um an increased limit for resources resource types so i will go ahead and build that and now i will just need to again upgrade um base camp as we go along but that was good information to figure out i'm glad i looked on the wiki so that is one thing from the last episode out of the way. I don't really have a game plan for this kind of session. Um, just kind of going to go and see what I get myself into. I'm going to do waterfall quest because I didn't even realize that was a quest again in RS3. I just assumed it was an OSRS only quest. Um, so what I'm doing, because I know I need earth runes for that and I don't have any. I could probably buy some, but I'm going to go ahead and kill these, train up some range, as well as get an earth talisman so I can craft earth runes whenever I want and be able to get them from my hood. So I will be back whenever I get an earth talisman. And that didn't take too long. I got an earth talisman. I didn't even get a range level here, but I got a health um, a hit points level. So now just time to go and I'm going to use the hood, add this, collect the runes, and then I believe I have the water runes required for waterfall quests so I can go ahead and get started with that. I might have just been like kind of dumb when I did this like two, three years ago without rune light and the quest helper, but I swear this maze was a lot more confusing. I feel like they made it a lot easier to understand, but I specifically remember that hill giant and that goblin being right there so i think i might be tripping but i'm i might have just been an idiot two years ago but i swear this seemed way easier than it did before but we're here that's all that matters and that is waterfall quest completed so that was not as bad as i remember because i've done it so many times on old school to where I flooded this room and gotten washed away. So remembered pretty much exactly what to do. And then that pushes me up six strength and attack levels. So 36 of each. Awesome. Priest in peril completed. You know, every time I make a new account, it really just sets in how much RuneScape knowledge is just forever ingrained in my head from all the accounts I've made over the years. Like, right now I'm working on the Knight's Sword quest. Knew there was a jug of water in the you know cooking shop. Why do I know that? Absolutely no clue. I've never even made an Iron Man account. I have no useful reason to know that information, but I do. The Red Berries, Southeast of Arak. Everybody should know that. But still, it begs the question on why my brain retains this information and not other probably more useful information. But I guess I'll never know the answer to that. Thurgo, how good is a red berry pie? You're saying they're great stuff and you never say no to them. If I eat a little bit of it, you want to give me a little peck? You're looking real good in that dialogue box. Oh, first time dying, got smacked by some hellhounds. Going to the muddy chest, which in hindsight, I wouldn't have even been able to open the chest because I didn't unnote the muddy keys I got from the flash event. So a learning experience. I'll just I'll just call it that. Knight's sword completed. 
That gave me a almost 13,000 XP smithing lamp. So with that, that pushes me up to 30 smithing, 14 levels. Dang, that is crazy. All right, just got 20 thieving. I decided to t get sidetracked because my cash stack was looking extremely low. Um, and I still want to buy some upgraded armor because I'm still wearing iron. So I looked on the wiki and one method of making money as like an early game Iron Man was pickpocketing this gullible tourist. So I decided to come over and do that, get some thieving levels and hopefully pull the small gift offering. And I know that is worth, I'm pretty sure if I read the wiki right, it's a guaranteed like 50k. That would really help the early game cash stack. Give me some armor and weapons, but I'm going to be doing this for a while until I'm happy with our cash stack. All right, just got 30 thieving and I'm at 14K. So I think I'm just going to keep going. I don't have a number in mind for my cash stack, but since I'm here already, I prefer to just get a good cash stack and be able to afford a better tier of armor. Um, hopefully this is a good way to make money. I mean, in the early game, I feel like it's pretty much better than anything that I have been able to see or find recently but obviously i would greatly appreciate it if anybody has better money makers for an early game iron man if you want to put that in the comments again i do read the comments so i will always take help and advice when i can get it okay so the money grind has been going pretty well um i looked on the wiki and found a clan chat that kind of tells you where specific activities are so it'll tell you where the tourist is um and as well as these corrupted scarabs which i did read about on the wiki as well um that you go and smash them you get slayer xp and you get you know anywhere from 200 to 400 gold so i've been also keeping an eye on that while i've been um pickpocketing and so far i'm at a 52k cash stack and 36 thieving so pretty good progress today and that is 40 thieving. So at the end of this, I think this is where I'm going to stop. Hit 40 and have almost 86K. So I'm actually just going to do it two more times. There we go. 86K. Um, perfect. And I think to get what I need for now and down the road, I know that better money making opportunities will come open. But I think 86k is a good spot for me to buy some combat gear and continue on. Okay, so kind of deviated from my original path. I was going to buy some combat armor, but instead I decided to just get my mining and smithing up. I already had pretty high mining and smithing from the couple of quests I've done. So as you can see, I upgraded my combat armor to mithril um didn't really take that long just needed to remember where coal and mithril ores were um but yeah so i upgraded that sold all of my iron and steel armor that i had made as well decided that with the fletching levels required to make even i mean like i think steel bolts when i looked were like level 40 fletching i don't feel like grinding that right now and i'd rather you know be able to have higher level range gear since i'm already a level 42 and if i want to do any slayer tasks that require range i'd rather have you know bolts and arrows that kind of match my level a little bit more so i decided with my money i'm probably just going to buy like runes and um ranging gear just to make that grind a little bit easier so i don't have to grind fletching out but the other reason I also, when I was harvesting this potato patch, I got this notification um, about the manor farm near Ardoin to start building my player owned farm. I have no clue what that is. So I think that's actually what I'm gonna go do right now. I know there's like player owned farms and ports and things like that. So gonna go and see what that is everyone if you're enjoying the video so far i'd greatly appreciate it if you could like the video and subscribe helps me out a bunch as a small content creator and granny said she'd stop trying to get me to go to the breeding pen with her if you do 
So please, please help. So let's see what you have to offer. Let's see what this player on farm is. Again, no clue, but I'm curious to see. Oh, okay. I'm just picking up this whole, whole yak. My dude's ripped, but again, like always, absolute idiot. Got 500 beans. Now what do I do with these animals? Also, who am I buying this from? Does it just appear out of thin air? I mean, I know magic is a big thing, but still. Oh, don't need to build that. What the fuck is that? <laughs> okay, the heat death of the universe. Uh, I feel you there. What about this one? Okay, so this one, cure disease. Oh, I can just... She said she knows a way to uh, kill some time. Did she take us upstairs? Granny. Okay, now I remove them and she makes them have sex. Just like she just made us have sex with her. Okay, this seems like a pretty cool way of increasing my farming. I don't know if this like gets me money in the grand scheme of things, but I'll be interested to see how that goes. But yeah, new content. I feel like it's a pretty cool addition. Uh, and again, something that gives you XP, I feel like, you know, daily or like every once every hour. Um, but yeah, I'll try to keep doing this fairly consistently just to get a full understanding of it and see if it's actually worth doing. But I have heard that the player owned ports are worth doing. I don't know the requirements. I don't know how to get there yet, but that's something that I'll figure out down the road. But I wanted to figure this out since I got that pop up. But yeah, my first journey with player-owned farms. All right, I got a comment about the player-owned farms that I can buy, buy woad leaves from the gardener in Falador, which I've done before for compost. But I will just buy, I'm going to buy a thousand because I have a bunch of money. And then I can take that back to the player-owned farms and put it in the beehive. And then I can harvest that every day for a bunch of free XP. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and be back when I collect the XP to see how much I get. Okay, so I'm back at the beehives and going to check if I can take the honey. Nope, I still can't yet. Is there a way to check? Oh, there is honey to collect. Um... Okay, I can't collect the honey from those yet. So time to look at the wiki and see what I need. All right, I'm back here at the beehives with insect repellent, which makes sense logically. But let's go ahead and take the honey and see what type of farming XP we get. Oh, wow. Oh, that is a huge amount of XP. And we get these medical honeycombs. I'm assuming there's probably different types of honeycombs that you get based on maybe what you put in there, but I'll have to look at the wiki again and see, but I mean, this is huge farming level, so this is probably most of what I'll do with the player owned farms until I start to kind of understand the use of it a little bit and how to like effectively manage it. Cause right now it's just a whole bunch of stuff that I've not divided the time to actually pay attention to the dialogue and read up on the wiki. But this beehive stuff is super simple. Just get my payback on this fucker. Okay, and I decided to work on some prayer real quick, A, because it was one of my daily challenges, and I have about like 80 infernal ashes from some wilderness flash events I've done, so decided to take them to the chaos altar out here and get some prayer up because that's something I've been ignoring, and I'm assuming that it will go pretty quick with the Chaos Altar. Um, I feel like it works different than it does in OSRS, where you get to like keep 50% of the bones. So I'm assuming with the XP rates I'm getting, I'm assuming that it just like doubles the XP that you get when you come out here. And it is really nice and convenient that they have a banker dude right there, so then you can just stay out here. Because obviously in OSRS they have the dude who will unnote them at the other Chaos Altar um, for coins, but it's really nice to have a dude where you can just access your bank right there. That's really convenient. 
it makes prayer definitely a lot easier and obviously with no pvp unless you enable it in the wilderness um super quick xp for prayer so that's actually really nice i don't know if gilded i would assume that gilded altars like in player owned houses aren't as good anymore just because of things like this but again that's something i'll figure out down the road but for now i mean i have gone up 11 prayer levels in like two minutes so definitely really quick xp okay so after about i believe like 80 something infernal ashes i got up to 35 prayer so that's almost where i need to be to start getting protection prayers all right i was restocking on some fishing and some food and decided to enter the fish flingers competition i have no clue what this is kind of seems like a ripoff of fishing contest in a mini game version but i did see that if you go to claim rewards there is a beginner's tackle box which still have no clue what that does but i'm assuming that you can hold fishing items in there or um potentially hold fish in there like a fish box like all the other ore boxes wood boxes things like that so i decided i thought i'd try it and see what it gets me i still have no clue what like the outfit does either i'm assuming xp rates or a chance to get like double fish but yeah just thought i'd try it because it's new content also i really need to get used to having the toolbox or the tool belt because i i don't need to bring a fishing rod with me it's in my tool belt i just can never remember the fact that i have a tool belt now because it's such a convenient feature and i'm not used to it at all like i cannot believe they added such a convenient feature into the game so everywhere i go i always am like bringing my pickaxe bringing my axe and then like halfway through whatever i'm doing i realize i don't need to bring it and i can save an inventory space and just get a full inventory of whatever i'm getting also this dude's just giving me a hint so a lot better than the people in the fishing contest quest um i guess they don't call it easy escape for no reason that was a joke i am enjoying myself actually okay and after like a minute of messing around i figured out kind of how this works so between like the weight and the hooks and the bait and i got the pikes up to 100 so this let's see what i actually get from this totally forgot to record myself sitting first place in the podium next to one other dude fucking second place loser but that content i'm not going to lie was pretty damn boring um that might be something that i do just to get up to 110 tokens to get the tackle box that holds raw fish and fishing equipment but other than that yeah it was it was extremely boring i think that's probably why i forgot to record myself standing on that podium because i didn't really care that much but i got a fishing level from it and i think i'll probably do it periodically so i can get the tackle box but yeah first place baby okay time to see if the statue collection slash strange rocks are worth it so i know when i first got like the strange rocks and i figured out what they were i did the smithing one i don't remember how much xp i got from it honestly but now that i have some fishing mining and hunter ones i'm just going to add them and see what levels i get okay so really not much but i did hit 30 fishing so sweet working on a little bit of crafting and i made these wood cutting urns i have no clue what they do but i can add an earth rune to them so let's do that real quick add earth rune so i imbue it this will collect wood chips when i chop wood at or below level 35 wood cutting okay so i guess i'm going to do some wood cutting which works because i have a fletching daily challenge and i can try to figure out what these do i sat here and cut normal logs until i could fill up this wood crafting urn and i'm gonna see what it does oh just gives you xp okay well that's actually pretty cool for some of the skills that are just a little bit more rough on the xp rates um yeah, that's actually really cool it's just another way to kind of increase the xp you get per hour when doing specific skills i actually really like that i will have to keep that in mind when doing other skilling grinds and that gives me again another excuse to get my crafting up 
I've kind of noticed that, or at least I feel like a lot of the early game content or the skilling content, there's a lot of ways to connect the different skills together. So you're kind of forced to keep them pretty even. And then your account progression stays pretty in line with each other. Um, so I honestly really like a lot of the changes that I've been seeing specifically related to like the gathering and crafting skills. All right, I think that's where we are going to leave off for this episode. As always, I greatly appreciate all the support that you all have been showing me. I'm excited to continue diving into RuneScape content and hopefully you guys continue to enjoy it. I hope you all have an amazing day. Thank you.